Greetings, this is Timothy Youngs, the Digital Apothecary, and today I'm going to be talking about basically how medications are packaged and dispensed from the pharmacy. Now, this the reason I'm doing this is because I have so many questions I receive from founders or entrepreneurs interested in the pharmacy space, and what they'll ask me is essentially, how do medications get to patients, and what are different ways that thing go about? And I thought this might be good because I'm going to start a series on medication adherence companies and their devices, so... I thought it might be a good review. So first off, you know, if you go to a pharmacy, you can buy things over the counter and they come different ways. So like you get like a bottle of ibuprofen, for instance, and you buy a bottle and usually it's child protected. You line up the lines, you pop, and there you go. So you got some medications in there and I put these to the side, but not too hard, but you know, it's a bottle. Then the other option is basically you have medications that are put in a blister pack. These have basically the same information. For instance, there's a lot number in case you want to do a recall. Um, drug, this is, these are probiotics, and then also expiration date. But they're not child safe because you could just slide it there and pop out and get the drug easily. Now in other countries, what you'll notice is that some medications just come in a box full of these things. and that's basically how they dispense medications. So a month supply is basically in a box that comes in full packaging or similar and patients just pop them out and take them. And I, I often think that's very interesting compared to the United States, which uses the Amber Dram vials. So two here, for instance, we have CVS and we have Walgreens. There's a whole bunch of other ones. And the thing about them is that there's always differences in terms of how these bottles are used. First off, they all hold different sizes, so we call them dram sizes in terms of how many uh, tablets or capsules it can hold, and also how they may work. So, CVS, you have to push down to pop open the thing, close, twist, and such. Take Walgreens, for instance, you actually have the safety cap here, you have to pull down, and then you can twist it and open it up. Now it's a cool feature is Walmart and Walgreens and a few other pharmacies, they use these kind of uh, screw systems where you can do this. And now if you are a person that has difficulty opening a bottle because maybe you have, uh, let's say osteoarthritis and you have or risk problems or some other uh, issues, this makes it easier. But this defeats the whole child proofing concept. So I'm gonna leave that open. Now, why do we do this? Um, big thing is this, because this is kind of an easy process if you really want to get to the bottom. There will be huge stock bottles, usually about a thousand count in them. And what you would do is, let's go back to these ibuprofen tablets when you use an example, use a counting tray. So basically, we usually end up counting by five. So let's suppose I was doing uh, ten. Then you take this one in here, and what you would then do is take that and put it back in the stock pile. And then this. You would just drop into the medications you're going to fill, put on, and you would put a label on. Now, labels are pretty much uh, the same. Usually, there's names. So, this is my medication. I take this for seasonal allergies. Take one tablet by mouth daily. Um, CVS rolled out this new thing to help out patients understand medications when to take them. So, morning, midday, evening, bedtime. And this one says morning, take one tablet. Now, you know, if we think about like in terms of a mathematical approach, this is once a day. So you take one, and it's 30 days supply for a month, so 30. Now, 30 will fit in there. What if you got three months supply? So times three, and now it's 90. Okay, well, let's do something different. What if you had to take, let's say, one capsule by mouth three times a day? Let's say that was like gabapentin, uh, used for chronic pain or seizures. So that'd be 90, and this would you got three months supply. Now you have 270. And those things can be actually bigger. And some medications are a lot huger. So like you have metformin and such, which are pretty big. So that's why you end up needing different bottle sizes. So why do I keep harping on this? Well, one of the things that I'm going to address here is basically this whole process that, well, let's take this one company, for example. So I have a Pillsy bottle cap here. And this is where you're gonna smart um, pill bottles. If you look here, This is very similar. Again, you pop down thing to open it up. But now, what can this cap fit on? You know, you take the CVS bottle and try squeezing it on. It doesn't fit. And now if we take this other large drip bottle, well, it's too small. So there again, this is where you have to consider if like you're a company that's trying to make these sensors or trying to make anything else is basically 
how big of uh, what can your product basically fit on and what can it tie to and I think this is always a consideration because this kind of makes things difficult at the end of the day and I'll be talking about these companies um, in the future a little bit so overall these things are cheap and that's why it makes it kind of easy because you just need a technician or pharmacist to basically count the medication you can also have machines that basically will take um, medications that are like frequent flyers so like lisinopril and things like that and they'll basically dispense a robot that will put it in here and put a label on and then the pharmacist will verify it so that's one way you can do like automation but you know overall it's kind of a cheap process now conversely is we've been seeing these things have been picking up and getting a lot of attraction so what are these well these are basically strip packaging of medications and the other way to call it is a multi-dose uh, uh, delivery system. They're actually very common overseas. They've been coming to the U.S. and they've been used in the U.S. for a long time as well. But they've been usually used at like long-term care facility, nursing facilities, because you would give a strip of medications and nurse would just pull off and choose and give this to a patient for administration. Now companies like PillPack, Alto Pharmacy, and others have gone to this business for basically to help out with adherence or for organization. That's why I think these things are really good for organization medications because just put them all in there. Some caveats, um, easy to open, um, might not be child uh, proof for that reason. Um, but before I get to some other negatives, like you can see how this works, like you can see it's time, like 9 a.m., 9 p.m., sunrise, um, nighttime, gives like the, what's in there, aspirin, ibuprofen, how many tabs are in there. So you can do different quantities, so like two versus three ibuprofen are in this. So, you know, it's kind of neat. And for those who are wondering, this is actually a, uh, a dummy patient. This was given to me from RxSafe. So this is not a real life uh, person. Anyway, um, so what's some negatives as well to consider? Okay, what if you were a patient that goes to your physician and they say, okay, you have a new prescription, but you have this at home. Well, now you have to take this. And you have to take this. Or what if someone says, well, I want you to change a dose or stop taking a medication or hold it. Well, now you have to figure out, okay, what's in here? What do I not need to take? And re so you can see it gets a little cumbersome. Um, I do like the system because it is kind of a or good organization facet for it. Because for a lot of patients, they just know, okay, I'm taking this and that. And I don't have to like go and say, I have, like 10 different medications. Which bottle am I going to open and take? So it does have some benefits from that standpoint. Um... And like, you know, if you take my medication at home in the morning, but I'm going to be out in the evening, so I'll just take this up, put it in my pocket, and then that way I know to take it um, when I'm out and about. So that's true packaging. Oh, and the other thing to talk about is the fact that this is also, if you haven't realized, this takes a lot of labor in terms of having some machinery basically handling this. And what I mean is there's a whole bunch of companies that produce strip packaging um, machines that would basically have medications. You fill them and such. You need technicians to fill, like, um, whatever goes in there. And those machines cost a lot. Um, TCGRX, RxSafe, Parada, those are some examples I would just name a few. And it's kind of like a, a large startup cost just to get into that business because while these are cheap and you can just order thousands of these to basically buy the machines to do this is going to be a large amount of money up front. So considerations for this. The other one I'm going to talk about is basically blister packaging or bingo packs as I used to call them. When I worked at independent pharmacies, these were actually pretty popular. So the whole concept is if you open it, and these would be filled uh, with the medications, and you would just pop them out. Again, these are really common at long-term care facilities. This is a weekly pill pack, and these come in different sizes. So like if you can imagine, like they can hold a different amount of medications in them, and that's kind of what their limit is. So how would it work in this case? This is a cold press, which what I mean is it's just a um, glue. Some of them you actually have to use a heating press in order to activate the glue to make them stick together. And what you would do is you would open this up. And what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to take this. And I'm going to be careful here because these things usually what they come with is a an insert from the company that you rest this plastic thing in. So you're not really supposed to fill it like like this this is actually incorrect they have like these little inserts but you have to go through and what you would do is over on this side you have the prescriptions so let's suppose this had like 10 different medications so you can say okay i want to take you take two tablets in the morning one tablet at noon one in the evening and these imagine these are just different medications so again you just keep going through that and 
go through. I'll just put these back. So those are all in there, and then you finish putting this thing to the side. And then what you do with this is you hold that, hold that down. And this is again, this is not very clean because I'm not really doing this correctly. So this is not exactly how it's supposed to work, but um, you're kind of getting the idea here. So now these guys are all in the packs. And what you would then do is then, if you were a patient, you could say, okay, it's Sunday. Oh, it's morning time, what do I take? So, okay, I'm taking this one, pull it over in the morning, and you would just open it. And then, that's your medication you would take. So this could be like all your morning medications right there. So while this is a little attractive, there are machines that do this. And again, um, this can be done by hand. You don't really need, uh, it's not too laborious. Uh, patients like this and pharmacies like to uh, dispense this like independence because basically this is a weak supply of medications right up front. It's not a lot of like complications to it. So in terms of like organization, these are two approaches, but you can see there's different ways of basically going about it. So that's going to basically wrap up my conversation about different ways medications are dispensed from a pharmacy. And these are some considerations just about, even if you like your company is looking to get into space, just what's out there in terms of currently available and being utilized. I would say this is the most common, maybe 90%. This is growing by a lot of different ventures. You see a lot of independent pharmacies getting into it long-term care facilities, same thing, long-term care facilities, but also in addition, um, a lot of independents are offering these services to their patients to basically bring in attraction. But you also have companies like CVS who now are also doing their own strict packaging service that they're rolling out. And I think others will get on board. So these are just, you know, food for thought. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or any thoughts or any questions that you want clarifications on. And this is Timothy Young from the Digital Apothecary and have a good day.